few hadiths for you. My own words are worthless. It's the words of the Ahl bayt that matter. Mathalu Ahl bayti kasafina tu Nuh, the Prophet says. The example of my household is like the Ark of Nuh. The Ark of Nuh was the only vessel that survived. Anyone who boarded it survived. Anyone who didn't perished forever. Mathalu Ahl bayti kasafina tu Nuh. من ركبها نجا ومن تخلف عنها غرق وهوى. It's the words of the Ahl al-Bayt that matter. If you do not board the ship, you end up losing. So the Prophet says, ملعونة ملعونة curse, and he says it twice. Is a woman who uses her tongue to hurt her husband, who uses her speech to inflict pain on him. Another hadith says that a woman who overburdens her husband has too much expectations from him. Get me this and get me that and I want to compare myself to the Joneses and whatnot. Is also someone who is cursed. By the way, cursed means that she will be cast out of the mercy of Allah. We want the mercy of God. We don't want to be cast out. The last thing we want is for us and our lineage and our children to be cast out. Of course, I'm not even talking about the obligatory rights of a husband and wife. But that has to do with jurisprudence. What the husband is supposed to provide for his wife. A lot of women say, subhanAllah. They've all learned because someone, some genius decided to spill the beans. Every single sister now says, oh, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to work. In fact, if I do anything, I'm entitled to ask for a payment. And, you know, if, if you don't pay me, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to cook, I don't have to wash the dishes, I don't have to take care of the kids, I don't have to even nurse the children, right? But look at this side of the equation. Look at this side. Of course you don't. Yes, that's true. And that's your right. But is that the kind of life you want? Is that the kind of marriage you're looking for? Where it's all about my right versus your right? A turf war, a constant battle of dominance? Who gets to be... The, the dominant figure in the family? Is that the kind of family where you expect good moral children to grow in without any sacrifice? Marriage requires sacrifice, brothers and sisters. Which is why I always say to couples, get divorce out of your heads and now let's sit down and figure out how to fix this. Because as long as you think to yourself divorce is an option, as long as you have an exit strategy, you will never be fully invested in the relationship. Get divorce out of the equation. People are getting divorced for the most pathetic, ridiculous reasons. Get it off the table. Now how can we fix it? Does it take sacrifice? Of course it does. Does it require the both parties to sacrifice? Yes, it does. But what if one of them doesn't sacrifice? Oh, you be the good one. You be the one who sacrifices for the good of the children. Why? Because Allah will reward you. One hadith says that if a woman is patient with the ill manners and difficult temperament of her husband. Asiya bint Muzahim. Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh. I'm not comparing her husbands to Pharaoh. But what I am saying is, Asiya, who became a martyr, whose name is mentioned, whose example, not her name, but whose story is mentioned in the Quran, who is among the highest ranking women in paradise, Allah says, I will give you the reward of Asiya. Because when he says something that hurts you, you don't immediately think, well, how do I respond to hurt him back? Instead of that sort of tit for tat conflict, instead of that adversarial relationship, the first thing you ask yourself is, what would God want? Not me. What would God want? And what can I do to ensure that this family stays together, that the children grow up to be good followers of the Ahlul Bayt? Another hadith says that if a woman serves her husband, cooks, cleans, fixes things, and does whatever you know she wants to do in the house as a service to the husband and the children and the family, if she does that for a week, فَتَحَ اللَّهُ غَلَقَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهَا سَبْعَةَ أَبْوَابِ جَهَنَّمْ Hell has seven gates. The hadith says God will shut down all seven gates of hell so that you wouldn't enter. 
And Allah opens all eight gates of paradise before her. She can enter through whichever of those gates that she wishes and desires. Seven days of service, God says, this is what I've prepared for you. This is what I have ready for you. Another hadith says that if a woman gives a glass of water to her husband, we talked about the other one, the other side. Listen to this side. Over there, the Prophet says that if a husband gives water to his wife, Ujjah, he will be rewarded. But look at what happens on this side. There's a reason, sisters, that there is a hadith by Amirul Mu'mineen which says, أَكْثَرُ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ النِّسَاءِ the vast overwhelming majority of those in paradise, residents of, uh, of, of the heavens are women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you much more than the men. And there is this obvious thing which you see women are just generally more religious, more inclined to the values of the Ahlul Bayt. Anyway, so the hadith says that if a woman gives water to her husband, it is better for her than an entire year's worship. Where she spends the entire night of the year in worship and the entire day of every single day of the year in sayam and fasting. Brothers and sisters, I said this a couple of nights ago. Let's forgive and forget. If you're going through marital problems, if you've had your own share of ups and downs in your marriage, just learn to forgive and forget. The hadith says that a man should learn to forgive his, his wife. Um, the hadith simply says, it's a prophetic hadith, a man should learn to forgive his wife. It's a right of the wife that she is forgiven, she makes a mistake, and we all make mistakes. And it applies to the men as well. So someone comes to the imam and he says to him, but how many times do I, do I have to forgive her? Like once or twice or three times? At what point, where do I draw the line? At what point do I say enough is enough? The Imam said to him, 70 times a day. In other words, there is no line to be drawn. In other words, no matter what she does, keep forgiving her. What, no matter what he does, forgive him. Give him a chance. Not just a second chance, but a thousand chances, because it's worth it. The reward is worth it. Paradise is worth it. Good children is worth it. Inshallah. May Allah bless you all. Honestly, I'm deeply, deeply proud and happy when I see all of these young men and women, all of these people who could have been doing a thousand other things, who could have been at home simply using their smartphones, doing a thousand sinful acts, but they chose to leave all that behind, to abandon all of that immorality, and to come and board the ark of Abba Abdullah. And if you're in a position where you think, how can I do it? My marriage is difficult. I have problems. Ask him on your saying. Ask the Ahlul Bayt. Because they can deliver, inshallah. When you do that, you can then expect to have good children. You can expect to have children who hopefully, by the grace of Allah and the Ahlul Bayt, by the prayers of Imam al-Zaman, brothers and sisters, those children can become among the supporters of the Imam of our time. 